are despised, but as for you and your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness. Your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years and bear your wardoms, and until your carcasses be wasted in the in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which he searched the land, even forty days each day for a year shall ye bear your iniquities. Even forty years and ye shall know the breach of my promise. See what the Lord did to them because of their tongue, because of what he said. The tongue of iniquity. And do you remember the word of God? I am God. I change not. I'm sure you are not thinking that God is wise such a day than he was before. He's always wise. And what he did before you all, he still does. You might not see it because it's not happening to this nation at the same time. But it's still happening. Many people are losing their spiritual heritage and spiritual life and they're dying spiritually. Others are dying in other ways because of the misuse of their tongue. Verse 35, I the Lord have said it. I will surely do it unto all the, this evil congregation that are gathered together against me in this wilderness. They shall be consumed, and they and their they shall die. And the men which Moses sent to search the land, who, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land. Leaders are supposed to lead people into righteousness. Leaders are supposed to lead people into faith, into obedience, into humility. But these leaders that went to the land to set them out, when they came back, instead of leading people to faith, and leading people to obedience, and leading people to righteousness by their slander, they led people to backsliding, to murmuring, to grumbling, to complaining, and to disobedience and unfaithfulness against the Lord. And the Lord said, even those men, verse 37, that did bring up an evil report upon the land, they died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were all of, of the men, that went to search the land, live still. The Lord is telling us then that we need to watch our tongue. Luke chapter 1. In Luke chapter 1, here we see again the necessity of repenting from the iniquity of the tongue, unbridled tongue, uncontrolled tongue, unguarded tongue, unguided tongue. We're looking at Luke chapter 1, verse 11. In verse 11, there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right hand side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy praise and his heart. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. The angel came with good news that shall bring joy. The angel came with good news that shall bring gladness. And the thing that ought to bring joy and gladness. And this is not the first time Zacharias, don't you remember the case of Abraham and Sarah? Don't you remember the case of Anna? Don't you remember the case of Isaac and the wife? The Lord gave them children and the mother and the father of Samson. It had happened before. And the angel now came and said, this is going to happen. And he said, you are going to have a son in your old age. His name is going to be John. In verse 15, it says, For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from even, he says, from his mother's womb, and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Everything is good news. 
concerning the child to come. And then it says in verse 17, It shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Here comes now the preventable tragedy of the tongue. Here comes now avoidable tragedy, the tragedy of the iniquity of the tongue. This shouldn't have been, and it seems to him, I'm just trying to tell you, when good news comes to you, and the Lord is saying, this is what is going to happen. I'm about to do this. I'm about to do this. We're planting churches. There's going to be a mighty revival. Many people are going to turn to the Lord, and the Lord is going to use you and use us and use this and use that. Keep quiet if you don't understand. Instead of opening your mouth and saying, How can this be? And why should this be? Why is this? And why is that? Avoid the tragedy that comes upon the people that say what they don't understand. And when this angel came to Zacharias, then he opened his mouth. Look at verse 18 now. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? He didn't have to say that. And he was a man of God, a priest of God. He should have understood what God did for all the people. In days gone by, and that God says, I am God, is there anything too hard for me? No, there's nothing too hard for him. And so he said, For I am an old man. And my wife was stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. I am, and I am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. Good news that then brought some calamity upon him, tragedy upon him. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak. Until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in his season. They were told in verse 21, and the people waited for Zacharias, and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple, and when he came out, he could not speak unto them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. For he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. That's the reason. The reason is because he made use of his tongue in a wrong way. The Lord is telling us that we need to keep this tongue. Proverbs chapter, chapter 17, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 17. We're looking at verse 20. The Lord is telling us, bring that tongue under control. Guard that tongue. Protect that tongue. Let there be a bridle that is guarding, controlling the tongue. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 20. He that has a forward heart findeth no good, and he that has a perverse tongue falleth into mischief. He that has a perverse tongue falls into mischief. Chapter 18, verse 21. In chapter 18, verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that use it, they that love it, shall eat the fruit thereof. The Lord is telling us then, control that tongue, keep that tongue, watch over that tongue, so it doesn't become your ruin, your destruction. We're looking at First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 9. First Peter chapter 3 verse 9. Not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrary wise blessing, knowing that Ye are there unto call that they should inherit a blessing. The Lord wants us to inherit blessing. He doesn't want you to lose your blessing or forfeit your blessing. But your tongue has to be under control. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil 
and his lips that they speak no guile, no deception. Let him eschew evil, shun evil, and do good. Let him seek peace and seal it, ensure it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. James chapter 1. In James chapter 1, verse 26. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, controlleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. You see, whatever else we do, whatever qualities we think we have, whatever skill or ability we have, whatever spirituality we think we have, if a man does not guard, keep, control, bridle his tongue, this person's religion is vain. Chapter 3, James chapter 3, verse 1, brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation for many things will offend all if any man offend not in word the same is a perfect man able also to bridle to control to guard to keep his whole body psalm 39 in psalm 39 the service is making a decision that you ought to make that you are not going to allow the avoidable, preventable tragedy that comes as a result of the wrong use of the tongue. You're not going to allow that to come upon your life. The Lord will keep us in Jesus' name. Guard your tongue. Guard your tongue. Especially when you're with a friend. Guard your tongue. Especially when the enemy is before you. Mind what you say. Especially when conditions around you are not comfortable, when it appears that is, you know, some things are happening, guard your tongue. And when you are with family members, guard your tongue. When Aaron and Miriam are discussing together, guard your tongue. When Michael, the wife of David, when you see him doing some, why should he do that? Why you see he rejoicing like that and throwing this and throwing that? As if he's one of the common people among the people. You know, guard your tongue at such a time and control your mind, your spirit, and control your personality and your tongue. In Psalm 39, I'm reading from verse 1, I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will take heed unto my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. The Lord wants us to keep the tongue so we don't fall into the tragedy of the people that are careless with their tongue. And I pray that this control, the Lord, will help us to keep on our tongue in Jesus' name so that we will not fall into the error, we will not fall into the situation of all the other people. Psalm 141, Psalm 141, I'm looking at verse 3, Psalm 141, verse 3, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth, keep the door of my lips. That's the prayer we ought to pray. Remember, not just the tongue, there's impatience, the tragedy of impatience. Not only that, there is the transgression of indifference. I don't care. I'm not concerned. I'm not worried. I'm not bothered. The transgression of indifference and now the iniquity of the tongue. And the Lord is telling us, guard yourself, control yourself, seek the face of the Lord, that the Lord himself will put you under control and these tragedies will be prevented they will not come upon your life in jesus name he has given us the divine antidote for preventable tragedy we're going to take we're going to make use of that antidote the faith and the patience and then the obedience to the word of the lord and then our lives will be secured and preserved in jesus name let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer and say lord help us lord help us all these trage tra tragedies that will be pre prevented. Help us, Lord, and it will be done. Don't be a careless and carefree so-called Christian. 
and not be an indifferent person hearing the word of God and not doing anything about it. You tell the Lord, oh Lord, help me, oh Lord, help me. And I will obey your word. Preventable tragedy. Tell the Lord, oh Lord, here am I. All these tra tra tragedies that come upon people because of impatience. Tell the Lord and say, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord, that I will not fall into the temptation, into the tragedy, the destruction that come upon careless people, carefree people. Don't be among the people that say, whatever will be, will be. What have I got to do with that? That's how some people are not saved. They're not willing to repent. Oh, if God wants to save me or save me, don't talk like that. He's calling you to be saved. Give yourself to the Lord. Preventable tragedy. Preventable judgment. Preventable destruction. Come to a decision. And say, Lord, here am I. I surrender my life, my will unto you. Beware of impatience. Pushing everybody down. So I can have the money, have my way, have what I want, disturbing the peace of the church, of the community, so I can have what I want, the way of impatience, say, Lord, help me. You have need of patience that after doing the will of God, ye might inherit the promises. Tell the Lord, O oh Lord, help me. I want to be patient. By faith and patience, we inherit the promises. Don't yield to the temptation of impatience. Run down the church so I can have my way. Scatter them so I can have my way. Cause disunity, disaffection. Make people backslide so I can have my way. Tragedy. I want to bring tragedy upon your life. Preventable tragedy. The devil is telling us, let there be faith. Let there be patience. Let there be obedience to the word of the Lord. Avoid the transgression of indifference. Not doing anything about what you need to act on. Not repenting, not returning to the Lord, not seeking the face of the Lord, not yielding or surrendering unto the Lord, indifferent, neither hot nor cold, nonchalant attitude, carefree attitude. Give yourself over to the Lord completely. And say, Lord, obey your word. I will not be indifferent. I will not be careless. I will not be lukewarm. 
you honor God when you honor his word when you obey his word when you check up your life and then you portray what you want you to portray that's honoring God not being carefree not being careless not being unconcerned Don't bring tragedy upon yourself by being indifferent. Bitterness. Defiling yourself and defiling others. Taking laws into your hand. Not allowing God, not allowing Christ to lead his church. You must force your way through. Tell the Lord, I'm sorry for the past. I'm sorry for my impatience. I'm sorry for my indifference. I'm sorry for the wrong use of my tongue, the tongue of iniquity, the tongue that slanders, the tongue that lies. The tongue the gossips the tongue that cuts down other people to build up yourself and the tongue that misleads misleading other people instead of honestly contending for the faith you are contending against the faith was delivered unto the saints. What's your tongue? Wrong advice. Cruel advice. Advice that makes somebody unrighteous. Advice that leads somebody away from the center of the truth that the Lord has given us. The tongue of iniquity. Tell the Lord that the Lord will bridle your tongue, control your tongue, guard your tongue. Direct and guide the tongue. It's not everything that will cost your mind. You spew out. Your tongue can destroy all the Christian experiences you profess. Salvation. Your tongue can nullify that. Holiness, sanctification, righteousness, consecration, devotion. Your tongue can destroy everything you 